an Elden Ring we can find from software's newest incarnation of the Moonlight Greatsword, now known as the Dark Moon Greatsword. It's the prize for one of the most popular quests in the game and acts as our tarnished wedding ring to solidify the marriage between ourselves and Ronnie the Witch. This sword is a staple of From Software games, being included in all of their major releases in some way, shape, or form, Sekiro excluded. It's one of the best easter eggs in the From Software basket, and every iteration of the sword offers its own lore and implications to the game it's housed within. For today's Elden lore, we're going to take a look at this weapon on a larger scale, beyond the scope of Elden Ring, and out into the FromSoft catalog. The Moonlight Greatsword can trace its roots all the way back to the Kingsfield games, from Software's original role-playing game. In these games, the Moonlight Sword is more or less necessary to defeat the final boss and restore peace to the world. It was not a lore-heavy weapon by any means, but it solidified itself as a staple of the series and an important piece of From Software history. The sword was first referenced outside of Kingsfield in the Armored Core series in 1997 with the LS-99 Moonlight, but would go on to be referenced in multiple other Armored Core games, as well as Ninja Blade, Enchanted Arms, 3D Dot Heroes, and Otagi. However, the most likely place many From Software fans came across this sword was in 2009 with the original Demon Souls. In Demon Souls, we can find this iteration of the Moonlight Sword, known as the Large Sword of Moonlight, in a huge swamp within the Valley of Defilement, behind the Leechmonger Archstone. The blade is surrounded by leeches in a mound of mud, and we pull it from the ground as if it were the sword in the stone. The description of this sword tells us, The legendary large sword that reflects moonlight, widely known in association with Moonlight Knight Vito. It's one of the few revelations from God. The blue crystal blade is composed only of light, so it's impossible to block with a shield. Also next to the sword is a corpse holding a hero's soul, it's likely this is the corpse of Vito, the original owner of the sword, and possibly a member of the group led by Lady Astraea that escaped into this area. The blade itself was considered very strong in Demon Souls for those who worked with pure faith builds as it dealt magic damage and had piercing abilities, giving it respectable damage output even in New Game Plus. Many first-time players flocked to this sword due to its shield penetration, ease of use, and easily understood build. While it is known as one of the few revelations from God alongside the Ring of Serene Prayer and Astrale, there's nothing else to this weapon in Demon Souls. It's just incredibly cool. When we move into the world of Dark Souls, the Moonlight Sword becomes the Moonlight Greatsword and has a significantly more direct tie to the world of Anorlando. We can only obtain the Moonlight Greatsword during our battle with Seath the Scaleless. If we focus on attacking his tail, we can cut it off, effectively making this iteration of the sword a literal piece of a godly dragon. The description reads as follows. This sword, one of the rare dragon weapons, came from the tale of Seath the Scaleless, the pale white dragon who betrayed his own. Seath is the grandfather of sorcery, and this sword is imbued with his magic, which shall be unleashed as a wave of moonlight. So this version of the sword is directly tied to the magic of the original sorcerer, the traitorous Seath. This iteration of the sword is the first to come with a magic projectile wave that can be shot from the blade. Instead of physical damage, the blade itself deals magic damage and scales heavily with intelligence, making it a fantastic choice for any build utilizing high int. However, to get the most out of this weapon, it's best to go with a pure int build. This blade is one of the four dragon weapons, and one of the only weapons of the game that can be obtained by attacking a particular part of a boss, along with Crossbeat Priscilla's dagger. It exists to show the sheer magical power of dragons, and allows us as a player to harness that power and make our way to the flame. In Dark Souls 2 and 3, we are met with interpretations of the Moonlight Greatsword. However, the in-game descriptions imply that while it's not the exact same sword from Dark Souls, they are both made from what remains of Seath the Scaleless. 
The connective tissue between these games can sometimes be muddy, but the existence of this blade across the entire trilogy helps to drive home that we are playing in the same world, following the unbreaking cycle of lighting the flame. In Dark Souls 2, the description of the blade says, The blade of this great sword shines with the brilliant rays of the moon. In the oldest legends, rarely spoken of today, it's said that the sword was born of a great white being. The strong attack unleashes its strength, launching a wave of moonlight. Clearly, the great white being being referenced here is Seath the Scaleless, and the weapon retains the ability to shoot a wave of magic. This time around, we can only obtain the sword in New Game Plus, as the necessary soul does not drop from the Duke's dear Freya when we defeat her the first time. In New Game Plus, we obtain the old Pale Drake's soul, which says, This once magnificent soul continues to exert influence over the land, even after the eons have reduced it to these remnants. Another tie to Seath, as this is clearly all that remains of his soul, and we can use it to create the weapon that was once a part of his very body. In Dark Souls 3, the descriptions tell us, the Moonlight Greatsword is a legendary dragon weapon associated with Seath, the Pale Drake. Charge strong attack to its limit to unleash Moonlight Wave. Osiris, the consumed king, was infatuated with the search for Moonlight, but in the end, it never revealed itself to him. So somewhere in the time between Dark Souls 2 and 3, Seath's name was rediscovered in the history of Anorlando, and we even learn that Osiris took an interest in the blade, but was never able to find it for himself. This makes sense, as upon fighting Osiris, he bears the strongest draconic resemblance to Seath. The only way to obtain this version of the sword is by having Luleth transpose the soul of consumed Osiris into the blade. The soul tells us, Osiris went mad trying to harness his royal blood for a greater purpose, leading him to the heretics of the Grand Archives, where he discovered the twisted worship of Seath, the Pale Drake. So not only did he worship Seath, but it's likely his own royal blood retained traces of this dragon, making it possible for the Moonlight Greatsword to be born anew. As an aside, this is not the only instance of the Moonlight Greatsword in Dark Souls 3. In Dark Souls 3, the Ringed City, we can use the soul of Dark Eater Medir to obtain a spell called Old Moonlight. The description of this spell reads as follows. A memory of an old sword found deep within Medir. This sorcery uses souls to grant form to the thought and attack with it. Attacks are coupled with light waves and sustaining the stance before attacking increases their speed and potency. The sword is named after Moonlight, but it's slightly different than the one fashioned of the Pale Drake Seath. Perhaps it is rooted in an older memory from not long after the beginning. The implication here is that this spell, which is clearly in the shape of the Moonlight Sword, is not the one we know throughout Dark Souls, but is tied directly to Kingsfield, whether this is a clever nod to the history of the Blade, or perhaps a tongue-in-cheek way to further tie together the FromSoft universe, we'll never know for sure. Next up, we have Bloodborne's interpretation. Interestingly, two versions of it technically exist. We can obtain the main version, the Holy Moonlight Sword, only in the Old Hunter's DLC. Upon meeting the legend himself, Ludwig the Holy Blade, we do battle with his monstrous form. Partway through the fight, he raises the sword and sees the brilliant light emanating from it. This seems to bring him back to his senses to a degree, and he uses the blade against us in his second phase. To our knowledge, this is the first time the Moonlight Sword is used against us as players, and we can only obtain it after defeating Ludwig. Upon claiming the sword, we can read its description. An arcane sword discovered long ago by Ludwig. When blue moonlight dances around the sword, and it channels the abyssal cosmos, its great blade will hurl a shadowy light wave. The holy moonlight sword is synonymous with Ludwig the holy blade, but few have ever set eyes on the great blade, and whatever guidance it has to offer, it seems to be of a very private, elusive sort. So in this iteration, it's almost as if the sword itself can speak to its wielder. It has some level of sentience that we, unfortunately, 
cannot experience for ourselves. One of the major notes here in our opinion is that the Holy Moonlight Sword has no true origin. It was simply found by Ludwig. So who knows where this version of the sword truly came from? Another fun tidbit, while this sword is only obtainable in the DLC, we have essentially a fake version of it in the main game under the name Ludwig's Holy Blade. This weapon is described as a trick weapon typically used by healing church hunters. It's said that the silver sword was employed by Ludwig, the first hunter of the church. When transformed, it combines with its sheath to form a greatsword. The healing church workshop began with Ludwig, and departed from old Gehrman's technique to provide hunters with the means to fight more terrifying beasts, and perhaps things still worse. This sword is clearly made to look like Ludwig's actual holy blade, and the heavy sword variant mimics the look of the glowing blade. It's a fun easter egg to learn that this weapon that I, personally, used through the whole game, actually derived its look from the Holy Moonlight Sword. Finally, we have Elden Ring's take on the Moonlight Sword, the Dark Moon Blade. This weapon is obtained at the end of Ronnie's questline. After placing the Dark Moon Ring on Ronnie's finger and speaking with her, we're rewarded with this sword. The blade tells us it is a Moon Great Sword bestowed by a Carrion Queen upon her spouse to honor long-standing tradition. One of the legendary armaments. Ronnie's sigil is a full moon, cold and leaden, and this sword is but a beam of its light. Our interpretation of this blade is that it acts as her response to our proposal. This sword is our wedding ring. We wield it in the name of Our Lady, as we have now become her lord. The Ash of War that comes built into this version of the sword is called Moonlight Greatsword, and allows us to throw magical waves from the sword, much like in its other Soulsborn iterations. Again, this blade was given a place in the overall lore and story of the game, tying it directly to Carrion royalty, and even changing the light of the sword from green to blue, in order to reinforce both the Dark Moon title of the blade, and its connection to Carrion royalty. The Moonlight Sword has been on a wild ride from the beginning of From Software all the way to Elden Ring. It's amazing to see this weapon make it through all of these games, and it's always fun to speculate if and where we'll find it whenever FromSoft launches a new title. The decision to tie the sword to Ronnie and the Carrion royal family in Elden Ring to us reinforces how FromSoft would like us to think the true ending of Elden Ring is the one in which we help Ronnie achieve her goals. But that's just speculation on our part. We know this episode took us well outside of the realm of Elden Ring, but we wanted to take the opportunity to explore the many stories around this historical weapon. Comment letting us know what you thought of this step outside of Elden Ring lore into the greater world of FromSoft games. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss our content. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.